Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. 37 years ago today, an area of low pressure was rapidly deepening to the southwest and making its way towards the United Kingdom. The rest, as they say, is history. It became known as the Great Storm of October 1987. It was really very devastating and what differentiated it from many low pressure systems moving in from the Atlantic was not just its intensity but the fact that it hit the densely populated southern part of Britain. London and the home counties were particularly badly impacted. The strongest wind gust recorded was 100 knots at Shoreham on the Sussex coast with several other coastal locations recording gusts of over 90 knots. Of course, the other thing which it has become widely remembered for is this quote from Michael Fish. I'll leave it there for you to read just for a moment, although I'm sure that most of you are familiar with it already because it has become part of the folklore around this awful storm. Well, back to the here and now. Can we expect any strong winds through the next couple of weeks? Let's have a look. Here is a view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from Tuesday the 15th, 18 GMT. To start off with, high pressure is centered to the east, areas of low pressure to the west. So there's a southwesterly or southerly flow moving up across the UK not cold by any means and I'll look at the temperatures a little bit later. Now as I run the sequence what we see is frontal systems move in from the west, they bring showers and long spells of rain to all areas. By the start of the weekend there's another frontal system there moving in. It looks quite active at this point, Friday evening. It's going to be bringing further outbreaks of rain. That clears eastwards, probably weakening as it does so. And in the following days, a southwesterly flow develops, so there's more rain in places. But towards the end of the week, a change begins to shape up, quite a big one according to this. High pressure starts building northward, so it's turning drier and more settled in all parts, really, if this is correct. I think, though, there's some uncertainty about the extent of the northwards influence of this area of high pressure. Here's the upper air temperature and jet stream sequence. The yellow and orange shading there over the UK is showing very, very mild air aloft at the start of a week. And as I run this, what we see is that does get pushed away, but then there are further pulses of mild air at times. With the winds coming in from west over southwest, it isn't likely to be cold at any point. The blues and the purples are locked away well to our north. That's the cold arctic air mass. Let's have a look at a few forecast charts to see what all that could mean. Wednesday the 16th of October, if you look down to East Anglia and the southeast, temperatures there 21 Celsius, 70 Fahrenheit. We've got outbreaks of rain which are pushing eastwards, so I think there is some uncertainty. It really will rely on there being some sunny intervals for those values to be achieved, but there is a decent chance of it happening, I think. Even 22 Celsius isn't out of the question. Forwards to Thursday, it's dry in all points, in, in all parts according to this, apart from the southwest, a little bit of patchy rain there. Temperatures have dipped, but it's still mild for time of the year. 19 Celsius in the southeast, 15 or 16 there in Scotland. Forwards to Friday, not a great deal has changed with some patchy rain there starting to push in from the west. And into the weekend, that band of rain is making progress eastwards. I think to begin with, it will be quite active there in the west. There could be some heavy outbreaks, but as it heads southwards and eastwards, they become lighter. Then by Sunday, further spells of rain in the west, drier in central and eastern England. Temperatures once more still pretty good for the time of year, 17 in the southeast, cooler in the north air between 10 and 13 in Scotland and Northern Ireland, a little bit lower of course over the Scottish mountains. Just coming back to the short term, the temperatures which are highlighted on Wednesday, the charts here are from the UKV model, so the high resolution one run by the Met Office. 
Temperatures in East Anglia and the southeast are widely between 19 and 21 Celsius, so it is warm for the time of the year. But I think to reach those values, it will be dependent upon the sun shining in the afternoon. And that will be the case according to this computer model run. As you can see, the cloud and the rain are held back a little bit further to the west. But the margins of this are quite fine and it wouldn't be a complete surprise if cloud moved further eastwards and the temperatures were capped several degrees lower. Now I started off by discussing the great storm of October 1987 and raised the question of whether or not we can expect any windy conditions through the forecast period. Well I think the answer is yes, this is just being used for illustrative purposes. It's shown wind gusts on Sunday afternoon. Western coastal counties there could be getting gale force conditions if this is right. Also the far northwest, we've got a brisk southwesterly flow covering all areas, but it is really the western coastal counties where the strongest winds are likely to be. But as I say, I'm just using this for illustrative purposes, so keep an eye on the short range forecasts as the time approaches. Rainfall, forecast aggregates here are for days naught to five. They're generated using data from the ECM and GFS models. Wettest in the north and the west. The rain totals are significantly lower on both model runs in central and eastern parts of England. Still some rain in those areas, though not completely dry by any means. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day period, the totals have continued racking up there in the west, particularly on the ECM chart on the left. You can see the oranges and reds in northwestern England, western Scotland, parts of Wales, Northern Ireland. So some very high rain totals in those areas, over 100 millimetres, but still a lot drier relative to that in central and eastern counties of England. Some rain there, but not a great deal. Now in more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare with each other? This is the GFS, Tuesday the 22nd of October. We've got the high pressure beginning to extend northwards. It's bringing the dry conditions really to southern and central counties at this time with rain continuing to be a greater risk as I've just really highlighted in the northwest especially. The Canadian model at the same time is similar, maybe the high pressure centered a little bit further south, still more of an Atlantic influence there across the northern half of the UK. The German icon similar, the European ECM also quite similar, and finally the UK Met Office Global. This has high pressure building northwards as well, a southwesterly flow there across the north. So I think taking them all together, the signal is quite a strong one that high pressure will be building from the south. Just how far it's how far north its influence extends is open to question at this point. But in general terms, driest in the south, wettest in the north, quite mild everywhere. Does that continue to be the case as we head through week two? Trends and probabilities only at this range, as I say every time I produce one of these forecasts. Starting with the 16-day GEFS plot for London. What we see across the top is it's quite a big spread. Temperatures at the 850 HPA level, a little bit above the average early on. Then trending downwards, the thick purple line there, the ensemble mean dips below the thick black line a little bit, which the thick black line being the 30-year average. And I think the majority of runs there are trending downwards, but there are a few which are going for a much milder scenario. Those are in the minority, but don't discount them. In terms of rainfall, some spikes there early on, but not that many. And it looks like there should be a significant amount of dry periods through week two. Two meter temperatures, these are quite interesting because there is a clear downwards trend here showing up. That, these are forecast maximums on the top part of the data table, forecast minimums, so overnight lows on the bottom part. And in both cases, we can see more green appearing through week two and a little bit of dark green there on the overnight lows indicating the growing potential for 
ground frost even in London. And as I've pointed out before, if you jump out of the London area into more rural parts of the home counties, for example, those that frost risk would be elevated. Up to Manchester, very similar across the top there. These 850 HPA temperatures, about 1500 meters above sea level in terms of rain. There are more rain spikes there than there were on the London chart, so it's, the chance of rain is ongoing, although it does look as though there will be some dry periods too, particularly later on. Two meter temperature data tables following very similar trends as the London ones, which is downwards through the days and the nights. So after a mild start, what we're seeing here is a signal for it to be turning cooler, at least temperatures heading back towards the average through the second half of week two. Glasgow and very similar, really close to average across the top, maybe a little bit below at times, but along the bottom, it's quite wet from more rain spikes there than there were on the previous two uh, locations. And it ties in with that theme that the Northwest of the UK is likely to be getting the wettest conditions for much of the two week period. Although even here, even here, there is something of a signal towards the end for drier conditions to become more likely, likely at least less wet conditions. The two meter temperature data tables for Glasgow, similar trends, the downward, the downward one isn't so marked as it was on the previous two, which would indicate that the really mild conditions which might be affecting the south for a time won't be extend, aren't extending into this part of the UK even early on. Although quite a lot of yellow there, 11 to 15, suggests that it is far from cold, at least at the beginning of week two. And towards the end there, I think close to average rather than anything uh, particularly chilly. Although there is a growing risk of nighttime frost, about 20, 25% of the column goes blue towards the end of the period. Rainfall for week two, according to the ECM probability charts, they show the percentage chance of five millimeters or more falling on the first three days. You can see the orange shading indicates where it's the greatest risk and that orange is mainly covering western parts of Britain and Northern Ireland, drier as you head uh, eastwards. For falling three days, the rainfall distribution is very similar, indicating that disturbances will still be moving in from the Atlantic at times, particularly into the northwest of the UK. The mean surface level pressure data table for York for the second week suggests high pressure will be having some influence. It's waning a little bit through the first few days. The amount of orange decreases. Those runs going for between 1,026 to 1,040 millibars. It then trends upwards later on. Also through those first few days, the amount of green is increasing. Those are low pressure dominated runs. So for us, a suggestion here that a relatively active disturbance may be pushing across the northern half of the UK, but it is a long, long way off. But the general theme as the GEFS snapshot pressure chart for Friday the 25th of October indicates is that high pressure will be centered to the south, low pressure to the north. There is something of a dip here in the isobars appearing over UK and that would point towards a greater risk of rain, but I think at least at this stage the wet conditions are likely to be reserved for the northern half of the United Kingdom. So to summarize Week one, changeable, very mild early on. And although temperatures dip through the course of the week, they probably remain above the average. Wettest in the north and the west. And later on, there is a suggestion that it will become mostly dry in the south. Week two, drier than average in the south with high pressure having a good deal of influence. Therefore, overnight fog could become quite widespread. In the north, it's a more changeable pattern, although even there, there is a suggestion that it will be turning drier later on. Temperatures trend downwards, so there is a growing risk of a frost. So, there we have it. I think a forecast of two halves in many ways 
wet and potentially quite windy and very mild at times through the first week. Then high pressure starts to show its hand. It turns drier and more settled, particularly in the southern half of the UK. Temperatures edge downwards, so a growing chance of overnight fog as high pressure becomes influential and perhaps frost as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, then if you did, please consider hitting the like button below. Also, subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already, and in that way you'll not miss any of my future updates. Of course, remember as well to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.